The MB-5 is a very interesting aircraft. On the outside, it looks like someone mashed a P-51 and Tempest into one airframe, but in reality, it is entirely its own, being built from the lessons learned and methods used from Martin Baker's previous attempts. So, it only makes sense that to get a fuller picture, we review those previous attempts to see how the MB-5 came to be in the way it did. The first successful design by Martin Baker can be found at the civilian MB-1, which for its time was innovative and yet simple to build, fly, and maintain, three features that would become hallmarked of the company's designs which made them an almost guaranteed favorite of both ground crews and test pilots. Following the MB-1 is the MB-2, a fighter proposal for the Air Ministry which incorporated the earlier trifecta of simplicity for flight, construction, and maintenance, while managing to deliver on par performance for fighters at the time. A lack of design potential, i.e. future-proofing, however, would see this design abandoned and the company move on to bigger, more ambitious designs. The MB-3 is where the first origins of the MB-5 can be seen, from both appearance, if you squint, and more easily to see, by approach in its design ethos. Though following the earlier trifecta of simplicity, it didn't aim to simply be as good like the MB-2 as what was norm for the time, but to truly be an advancement in capability. Instead of hydraulics, it used safer and easier to maintain pneumatics for flap and landing gear control. The wings were made with torsion boxes and laminated steel spars which made them incredibly strong and stiff compared to conventional means, and metal panels were used in place of wooden fabric, which was still common construction material at the time. It was by all rights an outstanding success, as Captain Baker discovered on the first test flight, where he found it to be highly maneuverable and easily flown. It could've, and should've, entered production were it not for an unfortunate tragedy caused by the choice of engine. On the second test flight of the prototype, with Captain Baker at the controls, the powerful, if temperamental, Napier Sabre would fail from a broken sleeve drive crank as Baker was climbing following takeoff. The worst possible time for engine failure to occur. Baker would try to make a crash landing into a field, but upon impact, the aircraft caught fire and ultimately would claim his life. Delays in development and delivery, as well as concerns regarding Martin Baker's capacity for such an order of production after this accident, would end the chance of any official order for the MB-3. Despite this tragedy, the MB-3 was not abandoned, and an attempt was made to switch the MB-3's engine out for a Rolls-Royce Griffin, designated the MB-4. This, however, never got off the drawing board, as instead of a simple swap of engines, Martin decided to go all-in and completely redesign the MB-3 into something majestic. The fully redesigned MB-3 became the MB-5, and though sharing a similar wing design, was almost a completely new aircraft. Its fuselage was a new design, using steel tube construction. Its engine, the earlier mentioned Rolls-Royce Griffin 83, driving contra-rotating propellers, and its armament, four 20mm autocannons, which was fairly heavy for the time. It was reportedly easily built and simple to maintain, favoring straight lines, boxy structures, and using detachable panels to allow easy access for maintenance. When first flown in 1944, it was considered a dream to fly by its pilots, with excellent handling and power, managing a surprisingly fast speed of 400 miles per hour at 20,000 feet. The only major concern regarding its performance was its weight, coming in at 9,000 pounds empty, which was almost two tons heavier than a Spitfire, and about equal to a Tempest Mark V. Speaking of the Spitfire and Tempest, pilots saw the MB-5 as superior in many regards. Though, in comparing raw data, it seemed that later Griffin Spitz and Centaurus-powered Tempests were just about equal in terms of performance. With this promising performance at reasonably inexpensive cost due to the aircraft's simplicity, the MB-5 would be displayed at an airshow demonstration in Farnborough. During the demonstration, however, in front of Prime Minister Winston Churchill and the Chief of the Air Force, a failure in the Griffin engine caused the plane to make an emergency landing. This failure on its own wouldn't doom the aircraft, but concerns again about Martin Baker as a company being able to fulfill a full production contract, citing earlier developmental delays, would stall any purchase orders until being ultimately cancelled with the end of the war and the Air Force diverting focus to jet aircraft like the Gloucester Meteor and de Havilland Vampire. Only the one prototype would be produced, which would supposedly be destroyed at a gunnery range sometime later. Oddly enough, sometime in the 2000s, John Marlink from Reno, Nevada would produce a replica with P-51 wings, though the fate of this replica is currently unknown, as is its airworthiness. Like many other prop fighters of its kind being developed near the war's end, it was an impressive aircraft for an era that was quickly coming to a close, and would be relegated to the dustbins of history with the dawn of the jet age. 
and though it never flew in combat nor proved its capabilities, it was a magnificent aircraft in feat of engineering and lends itself nicely to the questions of what if. And though its existence in the world today is uncertain, it does reside within many flight sims for enthusiasts to take to the skies with and see a glimpse of what could have been had history played out slightly differently. <laughs>